I've been asked if I can explain how the plug board on my Polish Enigma machine is going to work. So before I can explain that, um, I have to explain how the Enigma circuitry as a whole works. And it looks fairly complicated, but it's actually relatively simple. Um, it's just basically a big circuit. So if we have a look at this diagram, it's a bit of a rough diagram, I'm sorry, but um, it should, should work for this. Um, basically, what we have here is a diagrammatic repre representation of my Enigma machine. Um, and this is how all the Enigma machines work, actually. So up here, we have what I call a scrambler. Um, that terminology comes from the Welshman Turing bomb. Um, in that machine, all the different rotor setups were called scramblers. And this consists of the three rotors and the reflector. And the thing, the only thing you really need to know about this is this is where all the scrambling up of the signal is happening, along with the plug board, which we'll get to later. But all you really need to know about this is it interfaces to the machine through this entry wheel. And the entry wheel has 26 contacts, one for each letter of the alphabet. What happens is a voltage comes in on one letter, goes through the scrambler, comes out on a different letter. Um, that's all it does. The um, movement of the rotors, uh, the positioning of the rotors, all that kind of stuff, that just affects where it comes out. So the important thing to know is a voltage coming in on one pin goes through and will come out on a different pin. And that's because of the way the reflector works. And this was one of the, the uh, limitations of the Enigma machine, was that any letter you press cannot encode to itself. It'll always come out as a different letter, and that's because of this arrangement with the entry wheel and the scramblers and the reflector. Um, on this diagram, as I said, the plug board here is just represented um, with these links for now. So the plug board actually goes before the entry wheel. So at the moment, you can see these are sort of linked straight through. So voltage coming in just goes into the letter that it matches. Uh, if we follow this further down, down here, we have the lamps, uh, one lamp for each letter, of course, and the keys on the keyboard. And again, there's one key per letter. Now, the keys are just simple switches. And this is where my little micro switches come into it. So if you look at these switches, you can see each switch basically has a common and two positions. Now, the normally closed position, the, that's the position that the switch is in when it's not being pressed, when a key isn't being pressed, wires through from the common to the lamps. And you can see that on these letters, just B and C. Um, obviously, there's one of these for each letter of the alphabet, but I've only drawn three. So. This is the switch that gets hit by the, the keys that you press, and this is the lamp that goes with that switch. Now, you can see that the common here, which is this line, which is when the key isn't pressed, is connected to the lamp. And if we trace the circuit through fully, over here whoops, is where the, um, the battery goes. This is your input voltage and we can trace it through, we can trace the voltage through. So in the normal case, when a key isn't pressed, the voltage comes along here, goes through the lamp, and then goes up through into the entry wheel. Now that will connect it through to another pin, so it comes back through, and because no keys are pressed, say we come down this key, which also isn't pressed, it just goes back to the same place. It doesn't complete the circuit. The circuit only gets completed when a key is pressed, which is what we're showing here. So when the key is pressed, it changes the contact from the lamp to the other end of the, the power supply, the other end of the battery. Um, this is another reason why a letter can't encode to itself. Um, I don't know if this is a reason or a side effect, but Effectively, when a key is pressed, so when the A key is pressed, the A lamp is completely disconnected. There's no way that can be connected up into the circuit now because the switch has been moved. But if we trace this through now, saying that the A key is pressed, 
um, we can see if you follow the voltage down, it comes along here, now it comes through this contact on the switch, through the common, up into the entry wheel, and let's say it goes through the scrambler and comes out on B. It goes through B, through the plug board, which at the moment is just connected straight through, so that means there aren't any plugs connected, any wires connected. And it comes down along B through its switch, the lamp lights the B lamp, and then back to the power supply, back to the battery. So that's the circuit. And basically, it's just a very simple battery switch and light bulb. So the actual circuitry is very, very straightforward. Uh, the wiring, of course, is very complicated because you've got 26 letters and 26 keys and 26 lamps and wires all over the place. But fundamentally what it's doing is, is very, very simple. So the interesting bit is the plug board and what that does. Now the plug board is the thing that gives you the most combinations in the, the number of combinations that the Enigma machine can provide. So um, the way this works is... If you, I've called these ins and outs, even though it goes both directions. Um, if they come up here, say, into A, it just goes through the link into A and comes back out, say on B, and through the link. Now what the plug board does is it swaps two of these around. So if you were to swap B and C, we can imagine that these dotted links go away, and what we now have is this, where the wires cross over. So we've now plugged B into C. And if we trace it through again, say A is pressed, so the voltage comes along here, and then it goes through B, B is now swapped with C. So it will go, come out on the B on the entry wheel, but it swaps over and crosses over onto the C wire instead. So the C lamp would light up. And vice versa is true as well. If we imagined that B was pressed, the voltage would come along here and swap over to C. And you can see how that just swaps it round. And then if C was pressed and C is connected to B, the C lights up, uh, the C input comes in. If it came out on B, that then swaps over. Uh, I've got confused there, but uh, if the B key is pressed, the input comes along instead of going to B, it crosses over and goes to C. If say then it comes out of the scrambler on B, because it's crossed over, it comes out on C, and the C lamp will light. It, it does get a little bit confusing, but it actually does make sense when you look at it. Now, the way my plug board is going to work is with these um, audio sockets that I've got. And these are called switched audio sockets um, because of the way they work. So these are stereo sockets. Now stereo sockets have three contacts, a left channel, a right channel, and a ground. I'm actually using mono plugs, which are these. So I'm only using two of the contacts. Um, on the plug, this is called the, the tip and the sleeve. And what happens is you can see these little metal contacts here. When you put the plug in, that's what's making contact with the plug. Um, as I say, I'm only using two of these, so it'll be the bottom two. Now, when the plug isn't in, these metal contacts bridge across. So it bridges across these pairs of pins like this. When you plug this in, you can see the contacts lift up. So the, co the connection to this pin is now broken. It's only this pin. Um, I've drawn that on this little diagram here. So you can see this is when it's bridged across, so this is with no plug-in. What I have to do is, this is our socket, and I'm using these two contacts. This is the input and output side, which is these. I wire these two together. So with no plug-in, a voltage coming in here goes across the bridge, across the little short circuit of the two pins, and then back out the other bridge. When you put the plug-in, that breaks that connection here, which is what you can see here. So now the connection goes in, in this pin to the bridge, but that connects to the tip on the plug. 
and then the other connection likewise connects connects to the sleeve on the plug uh, you can sort of see that you can imagine that's in there how the connections are made now if we want to swap two wires around we have a wire that goes between two of the plugs you can see how I've labeled them here in and out in and out in and out and on this diagram you can see when we swap them over all we're doing is swapping the in from one letter to the out of another letter and vice versa so all we need to do to, to achieve that as you can see here the the in goes to the sleeve on this plug and the out goes to the tip on the other plug and vice versa so all we have to do to achieve that is wire the sleeve on one plug to the tip on the other plug and the sleeve on its plug to the tip on the opposite one uh, which you can see in this diagram so i'll put a picture of this up on my website anyway um, hopefully that explains more or less how that works i think that covers it